I asked FPL experts for their top transfer recommendations for game week 14 and this is what they came up with. And the first expert that sent in their recommendation this week was FPL Refresh. He's gone with Embuemo, a very, very strong pick indeed. Before we get on to him, if you want to be involved in future FPL experts videos, go to the link in the description, follow me on Twitter, and when I put the tweet out, get in your recommendations for a chance to be included in these videos. But starting off, like I said, we have got Brian Embuemo. The fixtures for Brentford coming up are stupendous at times. Luton at home, Sheffield. United away and the Brighton one with them yet to keep a clean sheet in the Premier League as well you would argue that is a fantastic fixture now there is the blank in game week 18 but I think there are ways to potentially navigate around that potentially looking at a free hit I think that's the option that I might go for if I do bring in Brian and Buemo I think obviously as well you could just bench free players and hope for the best that week I think a lot of people might do that as well after that game week in game week 19 they've got Wolves then Palace a potential double as well in game week 20 it would be Manchester City and Palace so not the best but with Brian and Buemo being on penalties as well it's always a good asset I absolutely love penalty takers he fits into that talisman theory the key man for Brentford as well and you know what in terms of attacking and defensive data they have been putting up some really really good numbers as has Brian over the past five game weeks as you can see two goals three assists good xg good xa good points scored and good predictive points coming up as well well, already had two price increases over the past couple of days up to 7 million now 26.3 percent owned i would be very fearful if i didn't have this man in my team for game week 14 and game week 16 as well brentford as well have a really good record against top six sides so i think even when you know they do play a more difficult fixture like the villa you know maybe you know you include brighton in there but when they do play these top sides, they do have a very positive record against teams that are set up to attack with their low block kind of five at the back counter offensive system that they go for. So I definitely think Brian in those big games with penalties as well is always a great asset and a must buy for me in game week 14. Obviously, the SA injury has kind of made it like really easy for a lot of managers to do. Personally, I'm sat on Diaby and I think he might be the one who goes to make way for Brian and Buemo. So FPL refresh. It gets the FPL Tom seal of approval, this transfer. Again, another one I would be highly recommending for this game week. Mm. Sticking with the Brentford theme, our next FPL expert has recommended Ethan Pinnock. Now, a few game weeks ago in my deadline streams, I did actually outline this man. So this is why I picked this one, because I really think this is a fantastic recommendation from a very kind of knowledgeable FPL manager. Now, Brentford are currently sat fifth in the league for expected goals conceded. This is Brentford, by the way, one of the best teams you know, in terms of defensive overperformance as well. So fifth for XG conceded from them. Like we said with Brian and Buemo, some real, real good fixtures coming up. The Luton game, the Sheffield United game, Wolves and Palace after that blank as well. You could easily expect them to potentially pick up three to four clean sheets from that period as well. Ethan Pinnock does have one of the highest XGs from defenders over kind of the whole course of the season. As you can see, picking up 0.80 over the past five game weeks as well. Not terrific, but you know, it's Still pretty good for a centre-back, kind of from a mid-table side as well. Brentford are leading the way as well from XG created from uh, set pieces. Something that they like meticulously kind of delve into and analyse and overlook at in some aspects you know they're always kind of focusing on those one two percent where they can kind of get an advantage and at set pieces is where they find that advantage Ethan Pinnock as well has a great goal scoring record from them so definitely a player I think I would be looking to bring into my team 3.7 percent owned good fixtures coming up as well so if you are potentially looking for a Matty Cash replacement maybe you're looking for that fourth or fifth defender who's going to rotate with your other boys as well I think Ethan Pinnock could be a great shout to go for. FPL Nim is the next expert that I did consult for picks for this week and she has recommended that you potentially go for Isaac. Now this one 
is a little bit more difficult. I think there's definitely certain aspects that I like about Ezek, and then there's some that I'm just a little bit kind of unsure on. Let's start with the positives. Obviously come back from injury, scored against Chelsea as well, and put in quite an impressive performance, to be honest. Obviously with the injuries to Callum Wilson as well, that would, you know, lead the way that he is going to play a lot of the games coming up. Now that is the big problem, the games coming up. It's a very busy fixture schedule for Newcastle coming up. Big games in the Champions League as well, this week obviously then we've got the festive period seven game weeks in December and that is where a lot of the quality fixtures do lie for Isaac with his kind of negative kind of injury record and his minutes record I think it does pose him as a little bit of a risk especially at that kind of more expensive price point of 7.4 million but kind of again another counter argument to that is there aren't too many quality forwards within the games kind of exceeding expectations Ollie Watkins has just been a very steady performer someone that's going to play a lot of minutes for Aston Villa over this period I can't guarantee that over Isaac but you know it might be worth a gamble the next three on paper don't look that good but Manchester United are conceding a lot of big opportunities especially XG as well. It is a matter of time before someone puts quite a few past them. I think over the past few game weeks, they have been quite fortunate to keep clean sheets, especially some of the chances that they've been given up. I think the Everton game, Newcastle should win that one. I would back Newcastle as well, the form that they're in, to go and get a, a result at the uh, at the Spurs stadium as well. But then after that, you've got some really quality fixtures, Fulham, Luton, Nottingham Forest, absolutely brilliant for me. But I just can't get like on board with this transfer, to be honest. For me personally, I just think he's a little bit too much of a rot rotation risk. And if I was to go for a Newcastle attacker, I think I prefer Anthony Gordon. A lot cheaper, a lot more nailed, especially with the injuries that they have in that area. And I feel he's just his versatility, his performances that he's putting in this season and his price point definitely makes him more of an appetizing option for me. So I do think it is worth looking at Newcastle attackers. I just don't quite get on board with the Isaac one. But let me know what you think about this one in the comments section below. And finishing up our FPL experts recommendation video for today, we've gone for a little bit of a different approach. Rather than look at one player, we've have kind of had a few suggestions for Arsenal defenders. Now, the two that I'm going to shout are out are FPL Steve and Golden Goal Fantasy Football. Both of them recommended me a player. I'm actually going to just quickly flash up uh, FPL Golden Goal's kind of recommendation in our group chat. As you can see, quite a funny response that I'm not going to repeat because, you know, I like to monetized it's, it's a cool thing you know it helps it helps me out um but yeah so he's recommended raya and then fpl steve did recommend saliba we'll get onto those two in a minute but the reason i think these are great shouts is the fact that arsenal have got some terrific fixtures over the festive period wolves luton villa and brighton air eh, liverpool air eh, but then there's west ham and fulham as well so you know a real strong kind of selection from there you'd probably have to back them to get potentially four to five clean sheets over the festive period I would say as well what goes with Arsenal is the the fact that they are first for XG conceded in the league second is Manchester City quite a way behind Arsenal as well something that we don't usually see I spoke about this in the wildcard video yesterday that I put out if you want to go and check that out, that is on the channel. But yeah, I spoke about the fact that, you know, it's usually Manchester City that are leading the way for XG conceded. But this year, it is Arsenal. And there seems to be a real good collective togetherness amongst that squad, especially at the back as well. And I think with the kind of inconsistent performance from Ramsdale, I would say that makes Rare look so much more of a fantastic option as well at 4.9. With Ariola stinking it up in a lot of people's teams as well, I think if people are on the kind of lookout for goal keeper options i think raya and sanchez have to be the top two if you are potentially going down that route as well saliba arguably the most nailed over that period i personally have gabriel and i am expecting him to be rotated over the christmas period like i said with isaac and the other players included in today's games there's seven game weeks in december alone champions league football as well league cup football continuing as well so lots and lots of games for premier league clubs over this period so do expect you know players to be rotated 
rotated. Try and pick quality players that are going to play a lot of minutes. And I do feel Raya and Saliba are probably going to be the two of the most nailed ones there. But yeah, I, brought, I thought, you know, we'd change it up right at the end of the video. Go for kind of a more holistic approach rather than just focusing on one player. Let me know what you think of that down in the comment section below. And if I have convinced you to potentially take a punt on any Arsenal defenders this game week. Thank you very much for watching today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you to all my experts as well. Like I said, follow me on Twitter if you want to get involved in future videos. If you want to help the channel out as well, hit that subscribe button as we are approaching 5,000 subscribers. But thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and good luck this game week.